In this video today, we're going to look at how we can combine stochastics with our normal traditional technical analysis to give us a little bit of extra edge. Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. All right, so check them out. There's a link to them in the description below if you haven't yet. And we're gonna hit the screens in a moment. I'm gonna look at uh, how we can use stochastics as a kind of extra, uh, extra criteria to take a trade. So we use traditional technical analysis. If you're, a te if you're a technician, this is right up your street. Breaking support, breaking resistance, pulling back all these kind of things, putting little candlestick patterns in, but just adding this kind of oscillator again. We can use stochastics RSI. We're going to use stochastics in a moment um, just because it's the one I've picked, but you could use any other oscillator really as a kind of extra confirmation. We want that spring to be stretched, momentum, we want it to compress, and we're looking for it to stretch again. We always kind of use this analogy. And sometimes using an oscillator gives us a little bit of extra feel as to when the spring is going to be compressed and is ready to explode again. So let's hit the screens now and let's look at how we can combine the stochastic oscillator with traditional technical analysis to maybe add a little extra layer of edge uh, to your trades. Let's go. Hey traders, very warm welcome to you. All right, so I'm in the C Trader app and actually it's the web app um, that I'm logged into, which is quite nice. Uh, you don't have to download any software. Uh, if you've got a Mac, you can just log into a browser and access T Trader. Um, and this link in the description below. Um, go and see if they're the right broker for you. And if you're not an MT4 fan, you can use C Trader. If you are an MT4 fan, of course, they offer MT4 as well as MT5 and all the uh, bells and whistles that go with that. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about stochastics and a kind of a little, well, it's not something sneaky about it, but a nice little strategy where you can use it to complement a kind of existing uh, technical analysis approach. So if you imagine now, um, I've got here cable, so GBP USD, I want a 60 minute chart or an hourly chart. Uh, and by the way, you know, with the layout, you can get rid of your main menu on the left just by hitting there if you're on C Trader. I'll have it maximized so you can kind of do your analysis without any clutter. Uh, very often, guys, we're going to put a horizontal line in, aren't we? You know, we put a horizontal line in, um, and that would make sense. You know, many people would agree with me on that if you're a technician. But hey, there's the high uh, back from, uh, let's get across crosshairs on it, back from uh, kind of 2nd of July. Uh, rolled back, didn't really do much. Uh, and now we push through, rotate back to the high. And yeah, we've got hindsight here, but wait wait a second. But you know, most of the time you'd go, right, that's uh, resistance now turning support. You got a little whip there. You'd probably be all over that if you were bullish on the market. If you weren't, you might wait uh, just to see, you know, this little kind of thing break. I like these kind of little triggers as well, you know, a little, a little complimentary, um, you know, hand up says, yep, ready to go. Uh, putting your stop under that low and off you go. Now, um, the point of this video, guys, is to show you how you can utilize something like a stochastic. Um, RSI works just as well as CCI, same kind of thing, and any on from the oscillator family to time these things and give you a little bit more confidence to, to pull the trigger and think, okay, the way I think about stochastics is that it's 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 kind of rotated back enough. You know, we talk about a spring stretching and contracting, stretching, contracting. You know, an oscillator is a good visual representation of that. So you've had the drive, you've pulled back. Yes, you've pulled back to support and you might want to pull the trigger based on that for a long. However, you know, you're questioning and saying, well, actually, is it really have has the spring really, you know, retraced enough for me to be to be aggressive on the on the deal? You know, has it pulled back sufficiently for it to have another big leg up or am I really just looking for highs? Because don't forget the difference is if you're pushing up and just tight flag, you know, you might just want to look for a break before a deeper rotation. We talk about how often flags might break and then you get a kind of first deeper pullback, second is a little bit deeper, third's a little bit deeper still. But anyway, let me kind of show you what I'm talking about here. So we're going to um, the functions on the side here. We go to oscillators. And like I say, you can use a few oscillators. They're very, very similar, uh, different characteristics. But stochastics is the one we're all familiar with. Um, and the default settings are kind of five and three. It's a little bit uh, tight for me, that. It's a bit noisy. Um, so I like to kind of adjust it. So let's go a little bit higher. I'm putting something like 13. Again, this is an art, guys, not a science. When you're playing with indicators, you want the indicators to give you um, some some guidance. We're not pulling the trigger based just on an indicator, very rarely, unless we've got a setup that's complementing a price action trade, uh, for me anyway. 
you want it as a guide. So this is 13 is a good way of doing it. And I mean, listen, you can play around with stuff. I'm not, I'm not opposed to, you know, I'm not one of these traders who thinks you have to have a specific setting on it or things just won't work. I don't think, I don't think trading works like that. I think it's so useful as a guide. So it's not less 13, 4, 13, 3, 15, 3, whatever. That's the kind of, you know, benchmark you're looking for. So if we look and see uh, what's, what's truly happened here. So the market's pushed up. Um, and like I say, let's say we were considering a buy and a pullback already from a technical perspective, very technical type trade. This strong breaks through, good solid moves there. Bang, 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 bang. You're waiting for the pullback, like I like to do in Forex anyway. I know I really don't like to be buying breakouts because very often we get pullbacks. Comes back in, but this is this is where it gets nice because it's coming back and it's you know the, the really got a good unwinding in the stochastics. You know, whereas normally you might not get this unwinding and you might be a bit sensitive to pulling it thinking, well, uh, you know what, we, we haven't unwound much. We're still at highs. You know, like, like this one, for example, you know, it's very shallow pullback and you're not getting much of a pullback in stochastics. You'd be concerned about, you know, kind of taking that. Whereas this here, you have got pullback in stochastics. It's gone under the midpoint of about 50. I like to use the kind of midpoint as a reference point. You've got your overbought above 80, oversold below 20. 50 is a good reference point. If it's technically sound, which this is, and the stochastics have come below 50, which they have, and now they're crossing back up, so your fast is crossing over your slow, which is about here. Uh, it's a bit of a premature signal if you're using the break of the trend, but they're actually moving in the right direction. You've got more things lined up, and you feel more comfortable pulling the trigger on the deal. And you've got the trend behind you, check. You've got a break of a key level, check. You've got a pullback to the key level, check. You've got a little sniff under the key level, check. Now you've got some momentum triggering again, check. Your stochastics have also gone below the 50, so you can feel like it's unwound sufficiently to have another crack at it, check. And the fastest cross the slow, check. I'm not one for going crazy with checklists. I know it sounds stupid saying all those check, check, checks. But you can just feel that maybe, okay, I can take a nibble of this. I can put a stop below the low. Uh, you know, and I'm always a, a big advocate, guys, of, of getting a good risk reward ratio and finding a good, sensible place for your stop. But you can have a nibble at these kind of trades because, you know, things are lining up. You, you've got the weight on your side. And if you're managing your risk efficiently, you're going to get three to ones, you're going to get four to ones, and maybe more. So, worth considering. Uh, we've talked about using stochastics in different ways before. But I just kind of thought, you know, with the current conditions and the way that things are spicing up, um, you know, and the, and the way that sometimes we're getting these kind of five or six day moves in currencies, it's just a little bit of a help. And sometimes you can say, you know what, it hasn't pulled back enough. We're still above 50 on the stochastics. I'm not going to pull the trigger yet. I want to see it below the 50 before I even consider buying this pullback then i want to see some ignition in my direction then i'll pull the trigger i don't want to be stepping in front of the train right here i want to see some move up brave brave ones of you will take it straight on the close at 30 minute with a stop below i get it i can see why you do that but then if you want to wait maybe even add as you start to see some confirmation from your stochastics then you've got a little bit more um reason uh, to get a bit more aggressive on the deal all right guys that was um a c trade in the description below uh, go and check them out, multi-regulated, um, super tight spreads, a selection of different accounts on offer. You know, go and see if they're right for you, um, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, keep the risk managed. Bye-bye for now.